Hello, Assalamu alaikum, and welcome to this next video in our series. Uh, just a reminder as ever, these uh, videos are for your general information and guidance. They are not um, legal advice. If you require specific legal advice, then please contact one of our experts who will be more than happy to help you. Today I want to uh, speak about a concept called insurmountable obstacles, which is a requirement that needs to be met in spouse applications uh, that are made in country. So firstly I just want to briefly go through uh, the requirements and then I'll specifically come on to the insurmountable obstacles and what that entails. The main requirements that anybody making an application from, from within the UK as a partner needs to satisfy are that firstly they don't fall foul of any of the suitability requirements, for example they don't have any extant uh, criminal convictions, um, they have, don't own, owe the Home Office any monies, they don't owe the NHS any monies, and there are various other factors which, you would, if they were relevant to your case, then you'd need to get specific advice on. Um, but in terms of the main requ uh, substantive requirements for uh, a partner, these are that you are either married, um, or have lived together as a partner for, for two years and that you intend to live together as husband and wife um, here on, um, that you have a current visa to be in the UK, that you meet the financial requirements of 18,600, that you have adequate accommodation. Now in order to meet the insurmountable obstacles uh, requirement it's not sufficient to simply say um, that your partner, the British partner or, or the settled partner has lived here all their life and don't fancy going overseas and, and living with you. That, that isn't sufficient. There needs to be a lot more than that in order to establish that requirement and it's quite a high uh, threshold but not an impossible one to fulfil. So what are the sorts of things that the Home Office or the courts are looking for uh, in relation to insurmountable obstacles. Now firstly, if there is uh, an issue with both of you being able to gain entry to uh, the overseas country, so for example one partner is from uh, Pakistan but the other partner can't get a visa, or there are some other issues as to why they can't get entry, then that in itself would be an insurmountable obstacle. If there are issues about uh, problems that they would have in, in that country uh, for, to enable them to continue to um, live their family life together, then again that could be an issue. So for example, they're in unmarried relationship and unmarried relationships aren't accepted in the home country and they may encounter difficulties with the authorities or generally uh, within, within the community that they live in. There may be uh, uh, other issues about safety in, in, in the country for the couple to go and, and, and live in and that in itself could constitute an insurmountable obstacle. So for example, um, with, with Afghanistan at the moment, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office advice um, states that um, the British nationals shouldn't be travelling to that country at all and so if uh, an Afghan national was to marry a British national in the UK and they don't have current leave to remain in the UK then you could rely on that uh, FCO advice to say that the British national shouldn't be accompanying them overseas and you could succeed on that basis. And although I've given you the example of Afghanistan, it's not confined to Afghanistan. There are many countries where um, the FCO advise uh, British nationals travelling to, so you would need to get specific advice as to whether or not uh, there is something along those lines that can benefit you uh, in those circumstances. Uh, other factors that may um, help you in establishing insurmountable obstacles are, for example, if the UK national or, or the settled partner in the UK um, has uh, other commitments, care commitments towards somebody in the UK that only they are able to fulfil and that by uh, them accompanying the, um, the, the partner overseas that would cause difficulties for, for the person in the UK, that, in it, that could constitute an insurmountable obstacle. Um, if the UK settled partner has a child that doesn't live with them but they have contact with them in the UK, then by them accompanying the partner overseas that would interfere with the family life that they would 
um, be, otherwise be enjoying with that child. Again, that is something that could constitute an insurmountable obstacle. Um, there are other issues like uh, health issues that the UK national may be experiencing themselves, um, for which they need uh, specific medical treatment. Um, uh, which may or may not be available overseas or there's longer term specific treatment that needs to be continuous in the UK and that those are the sorts of factors that you could also rely on to, to meet this requirement. Now the Home Office, uh, typically their position on these uh, cases is that they they say the bar is set very high and it is set quite high but it's, it's never as high as what the Home Office would like it to be um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, very rarely do the Home Office in the first instance accept um, that there would be insurmountable obstacles, but if an application was refused on that basis, you should get a right of appeal. Uh, and uh, if there are these sorts of factors that I've, I've mentioned, or there is something else specific that concerns you uh, and you feel may constitute a reason why you couldn't continue um, pursuing your family life overseas, then, um, then you should get specific legal advice and, and pursue an appeal in those circumstances. Now, I should mention that it's not sufficient just to make assertions that you know life would be impossible for you in, in the overseas country or uh, there are you know other factors or why you, you don't fancy going and living there it, everything that you say must be backed up by uh, documentary evidence whether it's medical evidence whether it's evidence from the country where uh, the um, overseas national is from to show why there will be these problems and, and it's very very important to get this sort of evidence and front load your applications to the Home Office to give you the best chances of success in the first instance you don't want to be going down appeal routes uh, which are lengthy and, and much more expensive and if, if, you, if, there, if you can succeed in the first instance then not only is that much more beneficial you get a quicker decision uh, but uh, it will help you save on substantial legal costs and, and, and court fees. I hope you found this video helpful um, and if you require any specific advice and assistance then our team is always here to help you. Please like, share and subscribe and farewell until the next video.